cooking the books with me, Val McDermott. Now, over the years, much has been made in writings about crime fiction of a sense of place, a sense of drink, a sense of music, but not much has been talked about the role of food in crime fiction. But I know from the tweets I get and the letters that I get from you, my readers, that people enjoy reading about what our detectives eat when they're on the road, when they're on the chase. And so I thought at this time of, of lockdown, when we've got a bit of time on our hands, I could share with you the recipes for some of the dishes that I mentioned in my books. And you too, in your kitchen, can recreate what it is to be Karen Perry, or Tony Hill, or Jack Vance. So for our first excursion into the fiction kitchen, we're going to go right back down to basics. One of the Scottish traditional meals, porridge. Now, the authentic traditionalists, people like Lynn Anderson and Stuart McBride, think it should be three ingredients in porridge. Oats, water and salt. Plain, simple ingredients. I, I can't imagine that Lynn Anderson uses hipster pink Himalayan salt. Or you'd be surprised at what Lynn Anderson gets up to in her kitchen. Um, but uh, this, this, is, this is not sufficient for, for Hamish. And what we're going to do today is Hamish's hipster porridge, a recipe that would drive the purists completely mad. So, if you're Hamish, this is how you start your porridge. Take your pan, take a dessert spoon, and you start with the porridge oats. Porridge oats, buckwheat flakes, Q10, walnuts, whatever, Brazil nuts, and they all go into the pan. Then comes secret ingredient supplied by the lovely Professor Joe Sharp's colleague Jenica, homemade chai spices. The wee end of the spoon, in they go. Other in chai spices are available. Indeed, but they won't be homemade necessarily. Then goes the coconut and almond butter, generous spoonful of. The nice thing about this is you get to lick the spoon. Like. Mmm, so. Who do you think you are, Nigella? Oh, absolutely, mmm. <laughs> Next comes your fruit, your blueberries, small amount of. And then your liquid. A mixture of coconut water and oatly. I've made this, prepared this earlier, about 250 mils of it, probably slightly too much, but never mind. And on to the stove it goes. We have the very great good fortune of having an agar, but this will do just fine on the gas ring. Um, the first thing you have to do is bring it through the boil. So talk among yourselves, throw it over the stove while it comes to the boil. You can walk away at this point and start putting your ingredients away. Coming towards the boil. Ideally, you need a non-stick pan for this, otherwise you get transported back to the 1960s where you spend your days at the sink with a pan scourer, a metal pan scourer, and try to get the pot porridge off the bottom of the pan. And a true traditionalist would, of course, use a spurtle to stir the porridge. A spurtle is basically a pointy stick, which comes in handy for all sorts of things in the Scottish Highlands, really. But I'm using my souvenir stirrer that I got in New Zealand last year when I was there as visiting professor at Otago University. And so, as well as uh, having my porridge every morning, I get a wee memory of our trip to New Zealand. I'm crushing, as you may notice, I'm crushing blueberries against the pan, just to break them up a wee bit, because there's nothing more horrifying than when you get your plate of porridge and you bite into a toasty hot blueberry that just about strips the skin off the top of your mouth. So it's coming through the boil here. What you need to do if you're doing the stove top at this point is turn it down really quite low so that it simmers away on a very low heat for about 10 minutes um, until the oats are cooked through. But if you're in the fortunate position of having an agar, then put the lid on, stick it in the bottom oven and leave it for 10 minutes. Then you go away and make yourself another cup of lovely coffee. So I've finished my cup of coffee and now it's time to take the porridge out. Oops. Oh look at that, that 
looks beautiful. Oven away, perfectly done. Give it a wee stir. Show those bully buddies are broken down. Oh yes, there we go. Absolutely smashing. Into the bowl. There you go. Hamish's hipster porridge. So here's an exclusive preview of Still Life, the sixth Karen Perry novel, which will be out in August this year in the UK and a little bit after that, everywhere else in the world. This is the section where Karen is discussing Hamish with her best pal Gearsel and they're sitting over a cup of coffee discussing how nothing's ever simple with Hamish. Karen says, It's all razzle-dazzle, even his bloody porridge. His porridge? Gearsel looked bemused. How do you have your porridge? Karen demanded. Oats, skimmed milk, teaspoon of honey, why? Hamish has oats, buckwheat flakes, a mix of ground flax seeds, Brazil nuts and COQ10, a pinch of chai spices, a spoonful of almond butter, a handful of blueberries and a mix of lactose-free oat milk and coconut water. How in the name of God can you have porridge where oats are the minority ingredient? Now Gearsol was giggling like a teenager. I can't believe you're judging him on his porridge. It's symptomatic, Gus. It's a class thing. Our backgrounds are so different. His parents are academics. He spent his teens in California where money was never an object. He's got a degree and he's a successful entrepreneur. Me? I was born in a council house in Methyl. I left school at 16 to become a polis. I think we're just too different. There was a long silence. Then Gearsel put her hand over Karen's. I hear you, she said. But how does the porridge taste? 